Welcome to One Little Spice, the Disney food podcast that isn't afraid to send you into the taste lab. Welcome to our first reimagined episode of Extra Spice. It is coming to you very quickly. I know we just talked about it last episode and... We had a lot that came out since our last recording for our recording that's coming out next weekend. Did you follow all that? Mostly. <laughs> so you're getting like a million episodes this month because we're we're seeing how things work out and playing around with stuff. And uh, we hope you appreciate all of the news that we are giving you. But we could not wait to share any of this news with you. I know it's something that we could have just tacked on to the episode that's coming out as it has not been released yet. But this is news that we had to bring you right away. And it's way more fun this way. We even have an extra spicy, extra special, extra surprise towards the end of this episode. Towards the end of this extra episode. It's extra stupendous. There's so many E's and S's going on right now. It's Extra super califragilistic expialidocious. So, first things first. I'm Julie. And I'm Amy. And today we are going over some extra spice, which is our extra little news segment, which will feature either a extra special guest or some extra special news or some extra special saliva. I couldn't think of another S word. I panicked. Th- yeah, that's, There's that's a There's always panic. a lot of saliva on this show. <laughs> Not in a bad way, just, you know, we, we talk There's with our mouths and... There's a lot of saliva. I don't know. There's a lot of extra. I am feeling a bit under the weather right now. I have a lovely tea to coat my throat so that I can speak to all of you lovelies out there. And so that's, that's what's happening right now in my world. So if I sound a little crazy and nothing makes sense, that is why. Oh yeah, if I sound a little crazy for the next six months, it's because I'm shouting at people. <laughs> at my store every day because half of my customers are hard of hearing <laughs> and she has to you know take a deep breath and when she gets home and she's like not at the pool store not at not the, the pool, pool store. store disney energy disney, disney energy. energy not pool energy well i mean disney pool energy in a sense i but. i always am full of pool energy especially at disney but you yes know. but we got to channel it to disney pools yep. and not pool store yes. and then we'll be good all right so To get down to business, we will not be defeating Huns, but there is another Disney movie attraction, (laughs) you like how I did that there, Mm -hmm. that has reopened as of Sunday, Mother's Day, May 9th, in Animal Kingdom. Can you guess what it is? I can. I feel like I'm on Blue's Clues. I can, but I have a feeling you're not talking to me. Hey guys, can you guess what it is? (laughs) That's right, the Lion King show reopened. Here's the mail, it never fails, it makes me want to wag my tail, and when it comes I want to wail. Side note, we have no mail. (sighs) There's no mail, today it failed, and now I cannot wag my tail, but when it comes I'm gonna wail. Mail! (laughs) Side note, I feel like I've shared that on this podcast before, but I wrote that little rendition of it because... When I was working in one of my branches up north, I was in charge of checking the mailbox and I would go every day to check and see if there was any mail there and there was never any mail. And it was very sad because all I wanted to do was sing the mail song when I got back into the branch for everybody. So I made up a different one so I could still sing it. Yay. You are welcome. Thank you. All right. So the Lion King, uh, it's called the Festival of the Lion King and it is an incredible show that happens in the animal kingdom. And I had the pleasure of seeing it once. Uh, Jason and I had fast passes for an hour later, but we ended up being able to make it to the show before that. So we did that so we could do something else later on. I don't know how that worked out, but even in the back row, the show is absolutely incredible. And if you have not seen it, but have taken the magical express, If you've seen the little segment where they flip and do their little tumblies as monkeys, that is part of this show. Yes. It's pretty cool. And they started on Sunday. They're still trying to work out all the kinks, obviously, because it's just starting back up. They haven't been able to practice all this time. They don't have the full cast. Um, I have not seen it myself yet. 
June 22nd is my next time in the park. I do have an Animal Kingdom reservation. I will be ending the day at Epcot, but I will be sure to check it out and give you guys a little bit more info when that does happen. I can only make three park passes at a time as a pass holder. So I have my birthday blocked out for Magic Kingdom because last year I could not go on my birthday and I'll be darned if I am missing Magic Kingdom on my birthday. And... I have October 1st booked out because that is the 50th anniversary celebration. And when Ratatouille's Wild Rat Adventure, whatever it's called. um, I'm just kidding. I know what it's called. But it's not what this episode is about. We'll talk about that later. But that comes out in Epcot as well. So I planned. And I wanted to go. I know this is like kind of off topic. But there is an amazing. It's actually food related. So here we go. So it is. There is an amazing booth inside the World Showplace Plaza called farmer's favorites farmer's feast not farmer's favorites and it's the only booth that has a rotating menu so what they did is seasonally in a sense they have different varieties of food that they are offering so for the i guess winter months in a sense but when the festival first opened from march to april or did it open in february i don't even remember but from the date it opened until April 10th, I want to say, they had these amazing, I think I mentioned this on another episode, I feel like I have because I remember talking about it, but they had these beet cream puffs, and I know that sounds really weird, and I was wondering, when when I got them, I was like, okay, so this is either going to be a dessert, or it's going to be a savory puff with beets in it. It had red beets, golden beets, goat cheese, candied walnuts, it was so good. And it was a dessert and it was sweet and it was amazing. And I ate one and then I had to bring the other two home because my phone had died so I couldn't take a picture of it. And I wanted Jason to try it. But they also had this really yummy sweet onion soup and a duck confit. Mm. I'm not sure if it was a duck l'orange or a duck confit, but it was definitely duck. Duck l'orange could be duck confit technically. Yes, I believe it was a confit duck l'orange. Mm-hmm. Which I did not try because I... I don't know. It didn't seem out of the ordinary to me, if that makes sense. It just kind of seemed like, okay, yummy duck. I love duck confit, so I definitely would have tried it. But, you know, I got to make choices. Without, without, a, w- without a partner yep. in crime yep. to taste, taste around the world, like I used to have Amy yeah. split everything with me, I get full really fast. Yes. So I have to make my selections. But this last time they had... Some delicious things, and I cannot remember. For Oh, they had an asparagus that was sautéed in a truffle oil mm. with Parmesan shavings on top of it and a sweet pea, I want to call it a puff, but I, uh, mm. oh my God, I cannot think of the words, like a froth. You know what? Foam. I'm, that's not what it is either. Foam. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Why couldn't I not think of that word? I, have I mentioned that I'm not feeling well tonight, ladies and gentlemen? But... That was really delicious. Mm-hmm. And then there were two other things, and I tried both of them, and I cannot remember for the life of me what they were. So the menu this time, I told you about the asparagus salad, mm-hmm. but it's green and white asparagus, truffle vinaigrette, spring pea espuma is what they call it, and shaved parmesan. They also have a herb-crusted spring lamb with marble potatoes, spring vegetables, and red wine butter sauce. On par with the Australia lamb. Excellent. And now the Moroccan lamb, because mm-hmm. that one was also really good. Excellent. So do you know why asparag- white asparagus is white? Because it's albino. Well, sort of, because they cover it from sun after a certain no, point, yeah, so, so the doesn't. chlorophyll doesn't develop. Exactly. No, I, I was just kidding. I mean, theoretically, that is what it is. It but is, yes, yes. I, I think I, we actually had this conversation a couple weeks ago about it, but... I could, in fact, make my own white asparagus. Mm-hmm. It's so delicious. All asparagus And it has a different delicious. flavor because it doesn't have the chlorophyll in yes. it, which kind of gives it a more grassy mm-hmm. taste. I mean, technically, I don't know how to explain it, yeah. but for all of you that eat grass out there, lawn grass. Lawn grass. <laughs> it tastes less like that. Anyway, so this lamb was delicious. I got the corner piece, so I got extra, extra, extra of the coating on it, but it was still cooked to perfection and not overdone. Delicious. And this, you're going to flip your lid over this one, a strawberry rhubarb upside down cake that was to die for. Oh my gosh, it was so good. That sounds so tasty. With a creme fraiche whipped cream. That sounds so tasty. Phenomenal. It was so delicious and it was like moist, (laughs) but it was so delicious. Um... 
But they also have a watermelon mint wheat ale that I did not try, which I'm kind of kicking myself about, and a hibiscus lemonade cocktail, which has hibiscus gin. Which I wonder if, because doesn't the Purple Hendrix have hibiscus in it? I don't know. Anyway, I know we got on a crazy not Lion King tangent, but that we complete com- conveniently finish before my accountant calls. <laughs> Back to the Lion King show. How did we get sidetracked? I have no idea. You just started when Jason... talking about the seasonal um, and how it was seasonal menu. And then you just started talking about what you ate in extreme detail. <laughs> no, I I know. But that trigger that was triggered from something hmm. when we were talking about the Lion King show. And I, I can't figure out. But when it gets edited, we will we'll find out. Yeah. So back to the Lion King show. So this is really fun. And... It was an awesome experience to go see, and I'm so excited that it's back because that means a lot more cast members have their jobs, and it's just a really fun show to go see. They have four different sections, and you each get to be a different animal, and they tell you what sounds you need to make, and then there is an incredible scene. And again, I don't know if they've reworked the production at all. I have not seen it since it reopened, but I will keep you guys posted. But they had the kind of like Cirque du Soleil ribbon dancer... The, like the ribbon that silks. hangs down from the, yeah the silks i'm not sure exactly what that is called but they had a woman and a man doing that and they were birds and so she was the beautiful white bird that was floating around and it's just oh my gosh it was absolutely incredible that i was just jaw to the floor so impressed with it it was amazing but if you get a chance if you are in animal kingdom go watch the show and while it will be extremely hot as the coming months approach it will be a nice place to cool off a little bit. Yes. It's an indoor show and they do have some air conditioning in there. Correct. Not when you're as high up as Jason and I were, but it was still cooler than it was outside. Oh, yeah. And similarly to a Disney on Ice show, there is things you will see far away that you will not necessarily see up close, like because the farther away you get to see the quote unquote, the bigger picture. Yeah, it was cool because we could see everything from where we were sitting. It was just hot. (laughs) Well, other than the heat, there's not a bad seat in the house. It is an awesome show. So go see it. If you're in Disney. Item too. I'm just kidding. We don't have items on this episode. There's no Daily Dish. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, people. Next, we have the Disney After Hours Boo Bash. So this was announced on the halfway mark to Halloween. Which I still feel is like May 31st or perhaps it was, oh no, I get, uh, no, I don't even know. Uh, I, I guess that makes sense because there's short, February is a shorter month and then there's a couple months that are shorter. So instead of being April 30th, it's a couple days into May. No, nope, that makes sense. I believe it. I'm sure it came out on the exact day that it is halfway to Halloween, which is the 7th. I believe that is the case. It is. I mean, it says we're halfway to Halloween and they hashtag yes, and everything. April so. 30th. Happy halfway to Halloween weekend. April 30th is not halfway to Join us. Okay. Well, April 3rd. Okay. So I live next to Salem, New Hampshire, which is very Halloween centric. And at the very... Really? Salem, New Did Hampshire? Did I say Salem, New Hampshire? I live next to Salem, yes, Massachusetts. Which is really Halloween centric. I don't know where New Hampshire came from. Well, I do know where it came from. It's it's up there. But I don't know where it came from in my speaking. And they take Halloween very seriously. And this past... Um, not this past weekend. Was it? Yeah, this past weekend was the general Salem halfway to Halloween. So everywhere that was able to do things were doing halfway to Halloween things. So apparently... The halfway to Halloween is officially May 2nd. That makes sense. Is what the interwebs are telling us. So when I said this past weekend, I meant the weekend before. Time has no meaning to me right now. I work seven days a week. Yes, that is all right. But not April 30th. I guess April 30th was the start of the weekend. But technically the second, which was that Sunday. Anywho, you are not getting a Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween party. Or a Mickey's Not So Very Merry Christmas party. We don't know yet. Actually, it would probably be not so very merry. Yeah, we don't know what's going to happen then. But... I just wanted to say not so very merry. We have no idea about Christmas yet, but Disney has decided that they are going to make, I mean, which is kind of similar to what they were doing before, but they have decided to make the Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party an after hours boo bash. So parks will be open from 9 p.m. to midnight on select nights from August 10th to October 31st. 
And it will be similar to how it was. You will be able to enter the park as early as 7 p.m. without having to have a ticket to the park that day or a park reservation. But the ticket that you buy is for the date that you buy it for, which is how it was for the Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party anyway. But it's one of those things where you cannot change it. And if for some crazy reason you can't make it that day and you do need to change it, be aware that you may not be able to enter or change the dates because they have filled up. And now the after hours events are limited even more than the boo to you. Nope. That's what this one's called. That's a parade. (laughs) Uh, Even more than the Mickey's not so scary Halloween party. So you will have even less people in the park, which seems super fun, but they will go on sale soon. We will keep you up to date on that because They have not gone on sale yet, but they will be on sale next month. So we will keep you updated and let you know when those go on sale so that you can purchase yours if you are in the area and planning on visiting. Some nights they're saying it will be 9.30 to 12.30. I assume those are days that the park needs to be open later for some reason or something. It says some night events in August and September will be 9.30 to 12.30. That could just be because... I, w- I wouldn't be surprised if it's all nights in August and September because it gets later. It gets later. Mm-hmm. It gets darker later in those months yes. and then continue- and then starts to get yes. darker earlier. So I assume probably all of August and part of September will be the later hours because now, it will be brighter out, now, especially in Florida. Oh, yeah. Now, if you are staying at a Walt, or should I say if you are staying at select Walt Disney World hotels, you may have an early purchase window. So Yes, they will be sending out, yeah. I believe they said email communication about yeah. that to those who have reservations during those yeah, dates. Yeah, so if you're booked, watch your email closely so you don't miss the early purchase window. Which makes me want to book a hotel room. <laughs> In Disney for, uh, I don't know, like, do I want to go super close to Halloween? Do I want to go closer to the summer? What am <laughs> I going to go dress s- as? I was going to say, you probably want to go closer to Halloween, so it's clo- cooler out, but, you know. I mean, was it, though, last no, year we went on the 29th, it. and, I mean, granted, I was also wearing a very fuzzy onesie, yes. but it was very, very, very warm. So, from... The information they have released so far, it basically, the costume guidelines are basically the same as they have historically been for- You just have to wear Yeah, you just have to wear a, um, a, you know, face mask and you can't wear a costume mask if you're over the age of 14. And in general, it just seems like Mickey's not so scary Halloween party light. Exactly. Basically, what they're saying as far as adults are not able to wear costume masks would be the only one I can think of right now is Michael. So if you went to a Halloween store and got one of those rubber Michael masks, Mm -hmm. you're not able to wear like a full mask like that. They have to be able to see that you are actually wearing a face mask that is required. And well, it's not even just that, like you historically couldn't wear masks. So like, for example, your creepy Burger King King costume with the, you know, giant plastic head that just stares at you. Uh, You can't wear that. You can wear the rest of the costume, but you can't wear that. Yes. And then obviously, like, don't go with Spaceship Earth because they'll make you take it off and see if you're hiding weapons or lightsabers or something inside of it. That happened one year. Um, So basically the same guidelines plus mask it up. And it seems like from what they've described, it's going the the boo to you parade. It doesn't seem like there's going to be the parade. They're going to do like the cavalcades that they did. And I know you got to see the sort of like boo to you cavalcades last year. And those were really fun. I know this because you sent me lots of videos and I enjoyed it a great deal. I cried for sure. But it's showing the event highlights as the Halloween themed cavalcades. There was a Jack Skellington one. There was one that I did not see, but it was on the alternate days from the Jack ones. And then they had the Booty U cavalcade and they did also have the cadaver dance on a trolley that went around the parks. Um, Things have certainly changed since last October, so they might be out and about in the parks or... We, we don't know yet, but I will definitely be going to one, so I will tell you all about it. Um, and the other cavalcade that flip-flopped with Jack Skellington was the villains, 
which was fun because you get all the songs from the Booty You Parade. Which, oh, so which cool. is like the best part of Halloween at Disney. It really is. Oh my God, the Booty You Parade is my favorite parade ever. But you get the Booty You and then you also get the awesome villain song. It's good to be bad. Oh, it's I'm good sorry. It's good to be bad. I would say it is tied with the unfortunately not listed Hocus Pocus villain spectacular show. That That is, is, that was awesome. That is, that is yeah. pretty awesome. If if we find out that that there's going to be anything from that, we will absolutely be telling you because it's yes. excellent. And should it be there in the it's future, so fun. and you're there, watch it. Get there early and watch it. But as far as Disney parades are concerned, yes. in the general sense, the ones that exist still, the booty was the best. Absolutely. Obviously, the electric light parade was incredible. Mm-hmm. May it rest in peace. Spectrum. Hopefully, Magic we'll get it back well. soon. Yes. So. They will have candy stops with plenty of sweet surprises. I will be interested to see how they do that. I assume the cast members will be the only one, like the single cast member will be the only one allowed to touch it. and Which is always how it's been. Be they wearing, would grab a and, handful. And- but be wearing gloves and maybe some sort of social distancing with like plaques so like people aren't breathing on them all night. I don't know. I'm not sure. There's going to be a lot. F- we get candy. Yeah, there's going to be a lot fewer people there. So that's going to help. Oh, yes, because it is the after hours yes. event. So it's a little bit different. Correct. There will be character sightings throughout the park. So no Seven Dwarfs meet and greet, but you might see them maybe at the front up by the train station or who knows. A special, perfor- oh, sorry, not a special, special performances by the Caval- I was going to call them Cavalcade Dance, the Cadaver Dance. And then attractions including favorites like Haunted Mansion and Space Mountain will be open. I assume Space Mountain will have the awesome overlay that it had last time, but it has not been announced. So I do not want to get anybody's hopes up, but I would hope that they would do that. There will be themed food and beverages available for purchase. More information as it comes. Absolutely. And special decor, lighting, music, and more. It says, Disney After Hours Boo Bash offers low wait times and some of your favorite attractions at Magic Kingdom. Dress in your beautiful best. So that is straight from Disney and anytime any more information that we get about that, we will let you know. But it is very exciting because we are getting an almost Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween party this year, which is going to be awesome. And I think that is going to mean last year they were kind of a little bit more lax on people being able to dress up in the parks, even though it's technically not allowed for adults but for like the whole month of october you could kind of get away with it i believe because they are doing this event they are going to not allow you to dress up unless you are going to one of these events again just remember disney bounding is a thing and it doesn't count as dressing up disney bounding is amazing so we have some fun news about things that are changing in disney world as far as dining is concerned but It is also really exciting because all of the food, basically, not all of the food, but food in Disneyland is opening up as well because the parks have just opened. So the Paradise Garden Grill will be opening on May 13th. The Alfresco Tasting Terrace will be opening May 20th exclusively for Legacy Pass holders and their guests. Legacy Pass holders are the pass holders... Before the pandemic. That all had their passes taken away. Yeah. Which I assume is one of the perks that they get for having their passes canceled and having to pay a gajillion dollars for new passes this year. And you will be able to start making reservations for those as of May 18th. Next is the Blue Bayou Restaurant, which is opening May 27th. Online reservations start on May 18th. This is the lovely and delicious restaurant that is inside the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. Napa Rose is also opening. That will be on May 28th for dinner only. And online reservations are also available on May 18th. Now, Napa Rose was where I did the Princess Adventure Breakfast when I was in Disneyland. So if you want to go back and listen to that episode, we had some amazing breakfast brunchy treats that were phenomenal. And then the Storyteller Cafe is opening May 28th for dinner and breakfast with no characters. And that will be May 18th as well that you can start making reservations. And I did also go to the Storytellers Cafe. This was a buffet when I went there initially. I assume it will be a different menu as it is in Disney World for all the buffets or 
switching over to all you care to eat and and different things like the that. So I is, assume it will be something. The term is all you care to enjoy. <laughs> what I say, all you mm-hmm. care to eat. Enjoy sounds prettier. But the food was delicious there. And it was actually, I was surprised because it was the first buffet and I've had it since then because apparently Disney is obsessed with Humboldt Fog now. Um, But it was the first Disney buffet where I was able to enjoy one of my favorite cheeses, Humboldt Fog, which is a goat soft cheese. It's phenomenal. And then the GCH Craftsman Beer is new. And online reservations will be available May 28th. We will give you way more information about those on upcoming episodes. And there is a list of all the lovely places where... Oh, the Grand Floridian, the Grand California Hotel and Spa. There we go. That's what it is. I was like, what's the GCH? (laughs) Um, But we will go over all of that on an upcoming episode because we will go into a little more detail about all of the restaurants that will be open in Disneyland for you to enjoy. Following that theme of restaurants, we hop back over to Disney World. One very exciting, very, very exciting piece of information is that the Cape May Cafe in the Beach Club, which used to have unlimited crab legs, will be reopening on May 18th with a modified menu and no character dining. I do want to go over this menu a little bit with you guys right now because I'm very excited about it and also a little bit disappointed, but I also understand if that makes yes. sense. So breakfast is nice and cheap. Um, I guess cheap is relative, but it's all you care to eat. So, But it is uh, $25 for adults, $14 for children. But it is Mickey waffles, buttermilk pancakes, French toast, scrambled eggs, bacon, breakfast sausages, barrel, crispy barrel potatoes, hash browns, fruit, yogurt parfaits, a bunch of pastries. So now this is not as over the top as it was when Amy and I went because I think we had like six different frittatas and yeah, like four different kinds of uh, this is biscuits and gravy. Yeah, and this is more of your like standard Disney basic, basic breakfast platter. A lot of times this is what you're going to get at like a a very family-friendly character breakfast. However, and I'm wondering how these are going to be and it makes me want to go there for breakfast too. Jason and I have reservations for dinner to test it out for you guys. But they have a lobster tail pastries filled with pastry cream. So I'm wondering, okay, so let's talk about real lobster tails in Massachusetts for a second. Not really filled with like pastry cream. They're more filled with either like a Bavarian cream or like a Bavarian slash whipped cream combination. Never really filled with just a straight pastry cream. So I'll be interested to see what those are like. So, and if you're really suddenly confused and have no idea what we're talking about, a lobster tail pastry is not actually a lobster, a pastry with lobster in it. It is a beautiful flaky pastry. <laughs> Can you imagine? And it's filled oh, with a cream really of some kind. Too. Pastry cream is is a specific cream, but to be perfectly honest, you can kind of use it, you know, colloqu- colloquially to refer to a lot of creams that go into pastries. So I just wanted to make that clear <laughs> because lobster tails in Massachusetts are also a very different thing from what we're describing. They're lobster tails. <laughs> Next is the dinner. So this is $42 per adult, $25 per child. Now, this one is a little sad. Mm-hmm. For a very specific but still reason. Okay. Yes. Um, so they have uh, the house-baked breads with accompaniments. Yum. Seasonal harvest salad, which will be plant-based. They have the turf platter, which will have slow-roasted strip loin. Oven-roasted lemon pepper chicken. Mashed potatoes and farmer's market vegetables. The seafood boil, which will have PEI mussels, peel and eat shrimp, Cape May clams, sustainable catch of the day, red bliss potatoes and corn. Yum. Sounds amazing. And I know you are all really upset about this, but no unlimited steamed crab legs. Sad They will be $29 per pound. Which I suppose isn't bad. I feel like... Okay, so I understand not making them all you care to eat because... You want to limit the amount of time that people are sitting in their chairs because it will be less filled and you want to be able to rotate people out a little bit faster. But I would like to see, I would pay $29 for unlimited steamed crab legs. And then I would be like, "Uh, don't give me anything else. Although that would be a lot for like 80 bucks to just have. But (laughs) it also might be, and we might, this is me just purely speculating. It might be 
essentially this first opening is the equivalent of a soft opening to get every everything kind of back under under control bef- because you add unlimited steamed crab legs that makes a lot more people want to get there right away you know that sort of thing so it's possible we may see steamed crab legs come back in the future or you know as part of the the initial price the irregular price but maybe it's just forever going to be an add-on yes now it's one of those things where i don't see buffets coming back anytime soon though this is florida mm-hmm. and nothing matters mm-hmm. down here um so they could, could come back down here uh sooner than they do anywhere else but i think once Disney gets back to full capacity, even if they don't do a buffet style, I think at that point would probably be when they up the price a little and then add the crab legs yeah. back as an all you care to eat. But maybe not all you care to eat, maybe just I don't even know. Yeah. We'll see. We're like I said, we're just speculating at this point. Cuz I know like there was a restaurant in California that I went to and no. No, this was in Florida. The Boathouse. No, what was it called? At the Boatwright, sorry, Boatwright in, I don't know why I thought it was in California when this happened, but at the Boatwright restaurant, whatever it's called, in the Port Orleans, I believe, or the French Quarter. It's in one of those. But they had truffle mac and cheese and regular mac and cheese, or lobster mac and cheese and regular mac and cheese, and with the all-you-care-to-eat platter, for an extra $4, you got the fancier one. But if you wanted more, you would not get a refill of that type. You would get the the regular mac and cheese. And it was made with the oreki pasta. So it was really good. But I would have liked more of the lobster truffle. I think that's what it was. Mac and cheese. So it might be something like that where they will add it into the seafood boil. But you will not get unlimited in the extent that we were all able to enjoy previously. It was wonderful. Again, this opens on the 18th. Jason and I have reservations on the 24th because I will be in Massachusetts on the 18th. I actually started to make a reservation for the 23rd and was like, no, I'm flying home then. (laughs) So we will tell you all about it. I cannot wait. It's going to be so delicious. And next, there are a few things changing in the contemporary. Yes, it is. So Chef Mickey's. Starting on the 16th of this month, we'll have dinner again. It's very exciting. The dinner menu actually sounds delightful. And I have never had dinner at Chef Mickey's. I've only ever had breakfast, so I cannot speak as to how it is. But their breakfast is phenomenal. And I hear that they have added some stuff and kind of modified their all-you-care-to-enjoy breakfast feast. Because I know they had a ton of offerings before. The one thing they have not brought back, which makes me really sad, is the chipped beef gravy that went on the biscuits because that was way better than the sausage gravy. Not that the sausage gravy was bad, but it was just like next level. Oh, it was so when delicious. there are two similar things, one's always going to be better. This is true. And beef, sausage, beef, sausage. Just saying. Oh my God. It was so good. I'm thinking about it now. <laughs> oh, I'm salivating. See, there you go. There's the saliva people. <laughs> Obviously there's saliva on the show. We're drooling about all the delicious food in Disney. There we go. All makes sense. And we're back. So, <laughs> The next thing is, I and I don't know if this, the Disney, oh, they're actually renovating some rooms at Disney, and there is a picture of the rooms being blocked off right now. So I guess they are doing some upgrades to mm-hmm. some of the rooms at the Contemporary. They are upgrading to um, mm-hmm. some different Disney themes. I know The Incredibles is one of them, uh, but that brings us to our next item, which is the wave. Of American Which is kind of sad. Exactly, because it's kind of gained some traction over the last couple of years. It's being really good and people are really excited about it. But they are closing for renovation and speculation and rumors are that it might be themed towards The Incredibles as they are theming some of the rooms towards that to kind of tie it all together. But they're... And again, it there's absolutely no word from Disney what they are doing with it, but it is being closed for renovation. And I, I appreciate that because while the food was super delicious when we went there for breakfast on our honeymoon the atmosphere of it was very lacking what would you say it was dated yes very i've the entranceway is amazing but the inside was just so i have never actually been into the wave 
I've only ever seen the entrance, and I do love the entrance. The entrance is amazing, but it just screams the 1990s at me. That's why I was yes, like... But I think what they yeah. are talking about with maybe doing an incredible seam is this lobby entranceway mm-hmm. could totally be revamped, but kind of kept yeah. the same to be some sort of superhero Pixar entrance, which I think would be really cool. So my only issue with that, and I don't know if this was something that you were just Mm going to about is the contemporary is like that original Disney hotel. And I understand making it more Disney and I, I, okay. So I understand renovating it. We'll go there. But I mean, we all know how we felt about Maelstrom and how, Gosh darn it, why the heck is it frozen now? This is kind of on the same level as that. Like, the contemporary is the contemporary. I... And I... It is what it is for a reason. I see no reason to have two character-themed restaurants in what essentially is Disney's flagship hotel. Now, granted, at this point, Disney really doesn't have a specific, like, flagship hotel because all like all of their deluxe hotels are amazing and every time they build one it just gets better and better and then they go back and they make the other ones better and better but at- but how many hotels do we know that the monorail goes exactly, through None? exactly exactly okay there's mm-hmm. there is almost the contemporary is almost slightly sacred that doesn't mean things can't change that doesn't mean things shouldn't change But it just seems like if they're renovating this restaurant that, as you were saying earlier, has arguably been gaining traction and popularity and people are, like, realizing it's there and it's great and going to it, to a second character dining location within the same hotel, that just almost seems like... Why? So, again, (laughs) there is literally... I love the Incredibles. There's literally no word on anything... That is changing. This is just speculation by other people who are not us. And then us speculating because on what they've said. some of the rooms are getting themed towards The Incredibles. And oh, so I think that's really cool. If the inside of the room yep. is themed towards The Incredibles yep. and the outside stays the contemporary. Like you can put some fun carpet if you want because you have to update carpet all the time. But I agree. Yes. And I definitely... But I feel like with The Incredibles, it's a very, if you've seen The Incredibles 2, the it graphics and the it artwork and everything are a lot more Mid-century. of that like blocky yep. kind of artsy. Yep. So there's a lot that you can do with it without making it. It's like it, a modern mid-century. Which, exactly. Without making it super yep. incredibly Disney. Yeah. <laughs> I don't see what I did there. Um, and yeah. still have it be a classic fit into the yeah, contemporary. Yeah, I'm too. But as it is called the contemporary, sorry, I know I'm interrupting you, but as it is called the contemporary, updating it to be contemporary is a point. Yes, I am totally on board with adding sections of themed hotel rooms to any hotel, any Disney hotel at all. And I'm honestly surprised it took them as long as it did to start doing some of the deluxe resorts having a few themed rooms because they're super popular in the the moderates and whatnot they get you know the we all know the caribbean beach they took that the pirate yeah, they took that one section that was literally way in the back that nobody wanted to stay at and themed it to pirates and then were able to charge more for those rooms than any of the other rooms and don't they have Little Mermaid themes room, t- or am I thinking of Art of Animation? Um, they have them. So I think it's Art of Animation. I know they have kind of like princess themed rooms. Um, there, I don't, I don't know if it's Caribbean. I know there is one somewhere. I just can't off the top of my head think of it. But it totally makes sense to put in the deluxe resorts some theme rooms because a lot of people go to Disney with their families. Like we, we all know this. This is not new information. And theme rooms are fun for the kids. But maybe, you know, mom and dad would like to have more of a higher-end resort experience, but still have a theme room for the kids. You know what I mean? Also, uh, fun fact, Jason and I almost had a pirate ship room for our honeymoon. Mm, I think you mentioned that that almost happened. It was one that was available, and uh, if I had said I wanted to do it, Jason would have sucked it up and 
stayed in a pirate ship for a yep. week but uh I, I am glad that we ended at the animal oh, yeah, lodge absolutely. and i think that was one that it was actually between that and the coronado and jason was like let's save some money and just stay at the coronado and i was like no animals <laughs> and it was totally worth it and it was amazing and magical and phenomenal and it wasn't even that much more it was during the off yes, season so exactly. we got a discount on it there's literally no information about when the what what the wave is becoming or when it will be reopened but we are hoping that it is open for the 50th. It would seem like that would be a logical I choice. I think I did read something about that they were... I can't tell you where because I can't remember where. But I remember when I was looking around it today, I saw something about... Yep, it was people speculating yeah. about when they think it will be open. It oh, no, I just heard... I, I thought it was on... I was only looking at Disney official things. So I thought I read something about people saying, yep, they are renovating in anticipation of the 50th but again that could just be people speculating because i can't remember where i wrote it where i read yes, it i mean it could be in anticipation of the 50th but it may not be by october 1st because the 50th will be the entire year and then some. of celebration yeah i mean they yes. already have the castle beautified yes. right now uh, so yeah oh, makes me happy. but that brings us to our last extra special what did I call it? Extra spicy, extra special, extra surprise? Yes, but it's not spicy. The de- yeah, it is not spicy. Although, sometimes dessert can be spicy. But we are talking about a new dessert that is being offered in Disney Springs right now. It is incredible. And I was able to try it with my lovely husband, who I host the FBI Disney podcast with. And we thought it would be kind of fun to bring him on so that we had two different points of view about this dessert although we were kind of talking about it earlier and we have very similar views on it but first i'm going to tell you what it is and send amy a picture of it since she has not seen it it is a total surprise to her. there will be a third opinion based solely on the visual and that will be from me but i am going to send amy the picture because i want her to comment on how she feels about it visually and then i will tell you all what is in it and then Jason and I will go over how we felt about it. Mm-hmm. So I just sent it to you, Amy. Let me know what you I'm think. I'm waiting for it to show up. Here it is. Ooh, that is pretty. Oh, okay, so first first thought out of the gate. I hate that daisy stamp. You know what I'm talking about when I say I hate that daisy stamp. I don't hate the daisy that's on there. But you know what I mean when I say I hate that daisy stamp? <laughs> Yep. Okay. Yes. Very generic. Yes. However, they did add glitter to this one and it was delicious. It was that marshmallow flavored fondant. Mm. Yes. Let's see where it goes. Sorry. But yes. Uh, but no, I otherwise, like, I love it. It's beautiful. I love the I'm I'm gonna let you describe it, so I'm just gonna talk about what I like. That you know, I love the contrast. Mm-hmm. I love the swirly doodle. It it looks really fun. Um, again, the Daisy. I it's just I have weird feelings about the Daisy stamp, um, but it looks it looks nice. I love the flower on top. For any of you that don't know what a Daisy yes. stamp is, it is a piece of fondant that is pressed into a silicone mold shaped like a daisy, and that is how you get the Disney stamp. I mean the Disney stamp, the Daisy stamp. It is not Disney the duck. I mean what? Why do I keep saying Disney? It is not Daisy the duck. It is a stamp onto some sort of pastry. It is a piece of fondant that is shaped like a daisy that just happens to be from a stamp in a sense. But it's it's a silicone mold. It is basically... It's very generic. It's very generic. It is pretty. And if I didn't have weird thoughts, it would work so well. And then I am going to describe what it looks like so you all know what is inside of it and how it appears. Um, Although... We shared it on our Instagram last night, so if you follow us on Instagram or on Facebook, you will have seen this delicious dessert. But it is a jasmine tea cream with lychee, raspberry, and passion fruit gelée, and a butternut cookie crust. That sounds so tasty. Mm Mm-hmm. It was so tasty, and it was created by one of our one of our Disney chefs, right? Uh, One of the Disney chefs, and it is a World of Voices honoring Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. So that is why it is themed as such. If you did not see our Instagram post, it is a, it's not quite a dome, but it is a little round 
cake that's about one layer thick and it has that galaxy coating on it. One side is red, one side is black. It has a lovely swirl of chocolate going up that is brushed in some gold. It has an orange daisy that Amy loves so very much with some glitter on it and a little yellow center. Around the outside are some little gold crispy looking things and then there are the gold crispy pearls on top. And then inside I tried to get a shot of the layers but it just, it was hot and it kind of just melted all together. And that's what happens in Florida. But it was delicious. It wasn't very strong on any of the flavor fronts. But you could definitely taste the lychee if you've ever had a lychee before, if that makes sense. Because the lychee isn't a very strong, distinct flavor. It's it's kind of on the lighter side. So if you don't know what it tastes like or have never had an actual lychee before, if you've had the drink in China, I believe it was served with lychee in it. So if you have tried that drink, you kind of have an idea. Amy wants to say I something. I have had a friend describe to me once... The flavor of lychee as a cross between a grape and a flower, but in a good way. I was going to say a little grapey. If you've ever had like a green grape with the skin peeled off of it, that's kind of the texture you're getting. As far as flavor, it's just a very light, fresh, little sweet. It's, yeah, yumminess. it's vaguely floral, but I, I personally wouldn't describe it as floral, but I can understand where my friend was coming from when they described it as like a floral grape. Flavor-wise, it was delicious. I loved it. It was <laughs> it was nice because it was split in half, color-wise, oh red on one side, black on the other, so Jason could eat his side and I could eat mine and he could stab me with a fork if I <laughs> Tried to finish his side. Or vice versa. But uh, here is Jason, our extra special, extra spicy, extra super duper, super califragilisticexpialidociousy guest to tell you his thoughts. So upon uh, my first opinion on this guy, it was definitely really pretty the way it was designed. And to me, it had like this uh, Mickey shorts aesthetic to it with little buttons on the bottom of it, like those little pearl thingies, you know? So I either, if you want to split this evenly, I would say... Uh, Get it cold again, or just get your own and enjoy it. But taste-wise, um, I'm a big fan of lychee. And when Julie got the thing and brought it out, I forgot what was actually in it. So for me, it was a surprise to have that lychee taste in it. And I'm, it's a definitely. It's, she says it's not a significant kind of flavoring, but I think it definitely is something that stands out amongst other, I guess, flavors and pastries and, and cookies and cakes and stuff. Yeah, and I mean, of the three flavors that you could taste. Um, I mean, obviously the tea is going to be a very subtle flavor and generally raspberry is a very pungent flavor, but I didn't really... Very sharp. Sharp. Yeah, pungent is bad, unless you're talking about cheese. But it's a very strong flavor and I didn't really get that or the passion fruit. So I kind of got like creamy lychee hint of tea in the aftertaste light fluffy magical crispy pearls deliciousness. Yeah, it was... I described it as being interesting. For sure. It was definitely a fun experiment and c concoction of adding and putting things together with a little bit of that Asian flair to it because of the flavors that were in it and the ingredients. But overall, I would uh, I would definitely recommend anybody to get this thing. I think over the Baby Yoda dome cake even, just for a different mm -hmm. experience and flavor. Yeah, so the Baby Yoda dome cake was definitely more of a child-friendly dessert. This one is definitely yes. more... I mean, yeah, if it you wasn't... If you expose your kids to something different, it yeah, might be not that It bad wasn't... Bad too strong of a flavor profile that kids couldn't also still enjoy it but it's definitely not the cookies and cream of the baby yoda what was what are jason's feelings on the flour when he's done talking uh, i'm a big fan of fondant so i uh made sure i ate that myself julia had like a petal i think off of it because i dropped it and broke a petal off i meant from a visual standpoint oh from a visual standpoint it was beautiful definitely it was real, it was i like the airbrushing that they did on there of the coloring and then like with the extra little glitter. I didn't really understand the theming of it, except for maybe the flower and garden going on with Epcot, maybe. And I don't know if maybe they were trying to make it like a lotus blossom, but failed super hard because, you know, because yeah. like it seems like it was yeah. trying to be that, but it, it definitely was not. But I did get the two petals that fell off. I got to eat those. It was a nice touch as far as the decor goes. And I know not everybody likes fondant. I, you know, sometimes they do that stuff in white chocolate as well, which I enjoy, but... For me, I like the fondant because it's just something different outside of the icing and the cake itself. 
But the cookie on the bottom of this thing with the little pearls around it were really good. It was it had a lot of flavor to it. It was like an almond cookie or something. It said a butternut cookie. So you know what I think of, Amy? And I don't know if I, I'm not remembering this correctly, but maybe pecan sandies. Is that what I'm thinking of? It was like a mm-hmm. like a like a butters shortbread cookie with pecans through it and stuff. Yeah. It, was, it was similar yeah. to that. But yeah. but a little I bit was... more of a like cakey cookie, not so firm. Yeah, I was going to ask you if when you were describing it if it was like kind of a short bready type situation. So that Yeah, that's definitely now. definitely what it was. And I definitely agree. I feel like they were trying to go for a lotus and that they just ended up with the daisy. Yeah. Although, I mean, they did put the yeah. dot in the middle. I don't know if they were like, yeah, no, we can't yeah, make maybe. a lotus yeah. work. It will melt into nothingness. Yeah. It's probably. too much fondant. I don't know. I don't know either. Yeah. Either way, I recommend this thing. And uh, by the way, hey everybody and or hey you since we talked to you the ear uh, the person listening to this, <laughs> it's, like, uh, it's mm-hmm. good to have a voice Today back I've on I've been here. calling them my lovelies. Oh, You'll yeah. remember the Extra Spice episode that we had with Jason Michael, the lovely glass artist. This is him and the same my person. now husband. Because I think when we recorded that episode, you were just my fianced. Or was that even pre-fianced? That was like, we're going to be fianced, but we haven't yet. Yeah, you still yeah. lived here at that time. Either way, it's nice to be back on, and uh, if you want to find more of me and my ramblings, you can find myself and Julia on our FEI Disney podcast, if you want a little bit of an adult perspective on some stuff, and Disney history and all that good jazz, but also, if you're interested in some glass-blowing things, I have my own other podcast called A Glass Blower's Companion, that you can find that on all the podcasting platforms. Hashtag shameless plug. Got to take full advantage. Safe uh, travels to Disney when you come. If you like hearing the sultry voice of my husband... You can find him on all those other podcasts. Peace. (laughs) Again, this is really cool. Um, It's part of a series called A World of Voices that is honoring Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. I am not sure if they are going to be doing any other treats. This one is the Jasmine Tea Cream Tart. If you would like to ask if it is still being offered, but it is absolutely delicious and definitely worth it. And I think it is really cool that they are able to bring, you know, a, a chef, a pastry chef who has this background and can kind of create a, a dessert that that is inspired by their heritage. And I just think it's really cool that it opens everybody up to new flavors and a little bit of history and, and things like that. So it's really cool. You can get that at Amaretz. Thank you so much for listening. We really hope you like our first episode of Extra Spice with our extra special guest. And just remember, every recipe starts with one little spice. Hello, this is a mic test. My main name, it is not Mike. Michael is in the other room and he's a Mike. Hey, Mike. Hey, Mike. How are you today? He says he's doing quite good. good. He's doing so good. Okay. I don't know. That was weird. That was fun. Yeah. Bye-bye.